So in today's video, I'm going to discuss how I use this one speed light to transform this scene into this. So hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So before anything else, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel and would want to learn more about off-camera flash photography or maybe just photography in general, then this channel is for you. So you might want to consider subscribing and while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to see more of my images, you could always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. So once again, I am taking you behind the scenes during an actual engagement shoot and discuss how my vision became a reality using just one speed light. Now, I will also discuss my entire thought process and at the same time, basic steps that I follow whenever I am shooting. So the very first step that I always do is location assessment. Now in this image, you could see that we were surrounded by nothing. Basically, that's what we wanted. We wanted to shoot in the desert. And one of the visions that we had for this particular image was we wanted to create a sunset photo with that golden glow, meaning that warm tone. And you notice that the sand in itself already had that orange tone. However, my problem was the sky was still blue and we couldn't really wait for the sunset because we had other plans in mind. So my initial thought was really to get my composition right. That's why I had my camera high above so that I can see the vastness of the desert. So the camera that I used was my Sony a7R Mark II with a 16 to 35 f4 lens. Now for you guys who are familiar with the channel, you know that I've been using the Sony system for quite some time now. And the fact that I was using the a7R Mark II, right now I'm using the a7R Mark V. Since you know that the a7R Mark II came out at a specific time, it actually shows that I shot this particular image, I think in 2016, which now brings me to another topic that I want to discuss about creating image, the images that are supposed to last the test of time. And that's one thing that I really like doing. Now, I, of course, when you shoot an image, you don't know if it's gonna be a classic or a timeless image, but six years down the road, I think maybe we were able to accomplish that. Do let me know in the comment section if you agree with this image being a classic image and a timeless image. But anyway, back to the shoot. So as I said earlier, the first thing I need to do is really establish my composition. So once again, I had my camera high above to get the vastness of the desert. Next, what did I need to do? I then needed to control my existing ambient light. So when I say controlling my existing ambient light, I always ask the question of what I am going to do with my ambient light. Am I gonna remove it? Am I gonna keep it? Am I, am I gonna use it? In this particular case, I did a test shot first with the existing ambient light, and this was the output of that one properly exposed. You can see that my settings were f4.5, 1 over 400 at ISO 100. This image in itself is a nice image already, but it's not the vision that we were going for. Plus, you could see here in the settings that I was actually on sunny mode. In other words, I was trying to push my white balance to give a more orange tone because as I said earlier, we wanted that sunset looking feel. So with this image, beautiful as it is, was not the vision that I had in my head. So I controlled my existing ambient light and I did this using the settings in my camera. Now I had my f-stop at f22, my shutter speed at 1 over 80, and ISO 100, and still on cloudy white balance, which gave us a warmer tone because I made my ambient light weaker. Now you may ask why I was shooting at f22, and the reason why I did that was because I was hoping to get the starburst from the sun. Unfortunately, I didn't realize at that time that it is also lens dependent, so I wasn't really able to get that burst of light. Now, I was also shooting on aperture priority. That's why my shutter speed was 1 over 80 because the camera in itself set it. And by shooting an aperture priority, I was able to use exposure compensation. That's why you could see here that it's at negative 2. In other words, I was telling my camera that the proper exposure was 2 stops under. Now that I had my existing ambient light controlled, you could see here that there was actually a rim light already. This was not created by the sun, but rather this light. This is a speed light. This is a battery operated flash. And one thing I like about these flash units is that they are very easy to take around, especially when I'm traveling. It's battery operated, it's small, and it's powerful enough so long as you know how to use it. 
Now I positioned my light right here because the existing ambient light was coming from here. And to show you the location of my flash in a more obvious way, here it is. And now, how is my flash being held in place? Well, I actually asked the couple to hold on to the flash and just put it right in front of them. Again, I had it here because I wanted the light to look as natural as possible, so that's very important for me. The direction of the light has to match the direction of my existing ambient light, the direction of my artificial light. So the first thing I did was fix my composition. Secondly, was I pinpointed what my ambient light will be doing. Third, I controlled my ambient light. And fourth, I put my flash in position. And last but not the least is to control the power of my flash to match that of my existing ambient light. And remember earlier, I specifically said that the vision that we had was a sunset photo with a very, very warm tone to bring out the beautiful warmth of the sand. However, even with my white balance set on cloudy mode, we weren't able to get that. That's why I went to Kelvin settings and really put in more orange so that I can get this final image. Now you could see how proper positioning of my light created that nice rim light here to separate them from the background and making it look as if it came from the natural light of the sun. And having the same color temperature, well, this flash had the same color temperature of the existing ambient light. When I shifted my white balance, this is exactly what I got. Now we knew already for a fact that since we were shooting in the desert, we weren't gonna get any of those streaking clouds. And to be honest, it didn't really matter. That beautiful sunset already was created just by having this warm tone. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get the starburst that I wanted but it also worked to our benefit because I felt that if the star burst or the sun really burst like a star, it would have been more of a distraction for the image. So sometimes things turn out better even if it doesn't work out the way you want it to. And I'm actually pretty happy with this particular image. Now you guys let me know too if I was able to accomplish what I was gunning for, which was to create a classic and timeless image. Now, if you have any questions with regards to this video, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And I do hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did like this video, subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video such as this, like this. Now, if you want to see more of my images, you could always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, till the next video.